We all love a clean and shiny motorcycle, but knowing which cleaning products to buy can at times be a little daunting. And so too can be the method on how to actually clean your motorcycle. In my teenage years, when I first started riding, the way I cleaned my bike was a sponge, bucket and a squirt of fairy liquid. And it did the job, well, kind of. Since then, I've tried different products and techniques and have now perfected a method which will not only leave your pride and joy looking like it rolled off the dealership floor, it will protect it for years to come too. Let me show you how to transform your bike to make it look as good as new. So my bike isn't looking too bad as lockdown hasn't given me the opportunity to ride, but it's still due a thorough clean. At this stage it's worth me pointing out that my bike has a coating of ACF 50 already on it. What is ACF 50 you say? Well, I'm going to show you in more detail in my next video, but in brief it protects your bike from road salts and all the grime which makes your bike rust. Rust isn't good, unless you have a rat rod, in which case the patinaed look is awesome. My chain is ready for a thorough clean, so the first thing I'm going to do is remove all the grime, dirt and old chain loop. You can buy a purpose made chain cleaner, which does the job, but you can also use white spirit, which is a perfect degreaser and is a fraction of the cost. Give the chain a thorough soaking to dislodge the dirt. Then by using a purpose made chain cleaning brush I spin the wheel and scrub the chain clean on three sides. When I'm happy it's clean, I turn the brush over and scrub the top of the chain too. You really need to make sure you remove all the old lube and dirt as that can damage the chain or more precisely the o-rings within the chain. The o-rings are rubber seals and are basically there to keep grease inside the chain so the chain operates correctly. Don't confuse this with lubricating the outside of your chain which we will cover later. Once you have cleaned the chain, it's important that the chain is thoroughly dry before lubricating it. That's it. So we've cleaned the chain, dried off with a clean cloth, now normally I would lubricate the chain, but because we're going to give the bike a very deep clean, I'm going to come back to that part later. So now it's time to wash the bike. Any exposed electrical connections, like my sat nav, I will wrap in a plastic bag or use cling film. Then the first thing I'm going to do is give the worst of the areas a squirt to pre-wash which agitates the stubborn dirt and makes it easier to wash away. Make sure you get into all the hard to reach places too where the dirt and grease can build up. I'm using Auto Finesse Citrus Power.
leave it to work its magic for about 5 to 10 minutes before rinsing it off. Now, I'm a relatively new convert to snow foam. I've seen some of my friends on Instagram using it, but I didn't have a suitable power washer. Then recently, I discovered this, an IK hand pressure snow foam washer. And this is the brand new model, the Pro 2. And I pay 20 pound for this. But what does snow foam do? Snow foam is like bubble bath for your bike. Unlike bubble bath, there's no need to light candles or play relaxing music or even have a glass of Prosecco while soaking. It's a thick, dense cleaning fluid. The lather works to gently remove dirt and grime, including stubborn marks like bird poo, grease and even oil. I like to start at the top and work along and down to the bottom of the bike. Bikes are made to withstand heavy rain and although you don't want to remove the seat and soak your electrical system, you'll be fine covering the entire bike. Make sure you turn the wheels a couple of times too. I'm using Meguiar snow foam and they recommend applying it to the entire vehicle and allow it to dwell until the foam just begins to break, but don't allow it to dry. Some say you can use a hand mitt or a sponge to work the stubborn dirt off, but I don't like to. The reason I don't is dirt can scratch your paint and leave tiny swirl marks where you've rubbed it in. A pre-wash removes the majority of dirt and leaves your paint undamaged. Once we've rinsed off the snow foam, we can move on to the next stage. Since I had my old full pop sprayed, I've been a big fan of Meguiar's cleaning products, but it's personal preference. I'm using the Meguiar's Ultimate Wash and Wax, which instantly gives a level of protection and shine as you wash. And I love it. It's much more effective than using fairy liquid, I've noticed. So if you can't be bothered with using snow foam, then you can do this. But I would say use a hose to rinse the dirt off your bike first, as you always want to give your bike a pre-wash so not to damage the paint. I would encourage you to use the two bucket method. One bucket contains your shampoo and the other plain water for rinsing. After wiping the shampoo over your tank, wash the mitt in the rinsing water. This will again ensure you don't wipe dirt into your paintwork. Now I've seen videos and witnessed for myself people putting a sponge on the floor, then picking it up and wiping it over their paintwork. That's the worst thing you can do as it will leave scratches all over the paint. When you have finally finished the entire bike, rinse it off with a hose. I'm also going to use the tyre scrub and water to clean and rinse any products off of my tyres. I'll talk more about tyres in another episode. Okay, that's it. So now we've rinsed the bike off and the final stage is now to dry the bike. So now I want to get on to drying the bike. So I've got a couple of these drying towels 
which are fantastic for actually laying on top of the paintwork and just soaking up and absorbing the water. Um, the other thing you'll find is that uh, the water sits in all these nooks and crannies so it's a little bit difficult to get to with the towel. I have been known to uh, sneak into the house and bore Mrs Jones's hairdryer but that's a bit of a slow process. You can buy a motorcycle dryer or even a pet dryer which is a similar thing. Some people use a leaf blower and it just so happens I have a leaf blower in the shed. I've also been known to take the bike around the block and blow the water off. But in the winter months, you can't really do this because your bike instantly gets covered in dirt again. Start at the top and gently pat down on the paint and let the towel absorb the water. Okay, so I think it's worth me pointing out at this stage that um, it is February in the UK, so a couple more months and the temperature will be a lot warmer and it will dry off by itself. Um, this time of year, the bike just doesn't want to dry by itself. Hence why I use the hairdryer and the drying towel and the leaf blower, which is a, two, a new technique. Um, I did an Instagram poll and a lot of my followers use the leaf blower and it does get the majority of the water off the bike. I think in time I would like to buy a proper motorcycle dryer because it's a lot smaller and easier to use but uh, it helps and the hair dryer certainly does the job. As I'm drying the bike I use this time to carefully check the bike over as I mentioned in my pre-ride video. Any areas that I may have missed or require a little more work to get them absolutely spotless, I again use a squirt of Alter Finesse Citrus Power and a detailing brush. Don't forget to rinse off the areas you've come back to and dry them again. Take special care to check your brake pads, cables, fork seals and coolant hoses. Don't forget your brake fluid and coolant levels. Don't worry about your engine oil for the moment, again we'll come back to that soon. That's it for this stage. In my next video, I'll show you how to apply ACF 50 to your bike. And believe me, after you've used it once, I'm pretty confident you'll use it forevermore. If you're not in any great rush, then step back and gaze in wonder how amazingly clean your bike looks already. But just remember, we haven't finished yet. As always, let me know if this has helped. And if you have any questions, then please don't be afraid to ask in the comments. Subscribe, like and comment and I'll see you in part three.